What's going on, y'all? This is Mo, and today we're going to be taking a look at something that I've been experimenting with uh, over the past several weeks, really, and that is uh, AI video upscaling. Now, I know AI is pretty popular lately. It's getting a lot of traction, and things to be seem to be moving pretty quick. Um, you know, maybe even a little bit scary. You know, who knows? In a couple more weeks, a couple more months, you can be getting videos from your neighbor of you walking into the mailbox without any clothes on. And they're like, what, was this you? And you're like, no, that wasn't me. How did you get that video? But until that day comes, AI is just an immensely powerful and useful tool that we're going to be utilizing specifically in this case for FPV. Now, if you follow the channel, you know that I primarily fly a lot of micro drones, you know, one to three inch quads, a lot of analog, a lot of whoops like this Fractal 75 here, and they're great fun. I think analog is really the king for micros, but it does leave something to be desired, which is the image fidelity. Now with this AI upscaling technique, I dare to say analog has never looked better. And the best part is it doesn't just work for analog. You can also use it for HD zero and even walk snail. And what if I told you that the walk snail 1080 footage is starting to look like DJI 4K footage. Now imagine a whoop like this, a 1S whoop, producing DJI 03 level video. You have to see it to believe it, you say. Well, take a look at this. All right, so here we're gonna take a look at the upscaling on the different systems, starting with analog. Feel free to pause on any images, you know, give them, give them a closer look, make sure to full screen the video, watch in 4K. You know, analog is most apparent to me, the denoising that's going on. You can see that in the, in the black shirt on the left versus the right. It removes a lot of that noise. It deinterlaces and smooths out things while still looking pretty natural. More apparent here in the night sky. On the image on the left, we have an extreme noise littering the sky, the ground, and the de the upscaler is doing a really good job at removing that, deinterlacing the lines of the house, and while still keeping, to me, what is a natural look. Walk snail is a bit harder to see, but you want to zoom in and take a look at individual parts. The noise that's present on the left, as well as the over sharpness, kind of gets smoothed out. And while it may not look as impressive in a still image, while it's playing, it, it is more uh, natural. This image is more funny than anything else, but you can still see that that denoising that's going on and that smoothing of the image. It makes it makes it makes a really big difference. Same with HDZ, you know, we're deinterlacing a lot of the lines of the house. We're sharpening that and we're restoring some of that compression. I think this looks great. This is almost walk snail quality on the right. And, you know, you can notice that the lines of the car being smoothed out, sharpened, and denoised. And, man, that's, that's impressive. That's impressive to me. All right, so now that we've taken a look at what the AI can actually do, I did want to go over some tips that I had if you decided to use Topaz AI, which is what I use. Now, just a quick disclaimer. Number one, I'm not affiliated or sponsored by Topaz in any way. I just found that program and I used it and, and I liked the results. Two, um, I didn't do extensive research to know if this is the best program, if it's the if it's the most cost effective. It's just, again, the one that I found through some research and seemed to do the job well enough for me. And three, it's kind of expensive. If you're looking to buy the full version of Topaz, I think it's about like 300 bucks, which is a pretty penny, I know. And, you know, it might be a little bit too steep for most people to pay for something that just ends up being a hobby. Now, there is a trial version you can download, and I recommend you do that for sure, even if you're really interested in picking it up, just to see how it runs on your rig. I'll get into more of that later. Um, and, you know, there are some free options available online that you could take a look at. But what I found is that you're not really going to get too good of results unless you 
purchase a more powerful program like Topaz and I'm sure many others. So those are just some disclaimers. Um, anyway, well, let's get into the Topaz review and I'll catch you back here at the end. All right, so here we are in Topaz. Really quickly, I just want to go over a couple of the settings that I use for my analog footage just to give you a couple of tips about the program itself and a couple of issues that I ran into. Now, this is going to be the screen that you're looking at as soon as you drop your DVR file into the window. Now, I'm using an HDZ 4x3 file, so we see the native resolution up here, 982 by 720 at 60 FPS. Whatever DVR file, this is a, this is a pretty high resolution uh, output file. If you're using other goggles, it might be lower. That's okay. This is just the HDZ native output. I found that the best quality footage for analog is this option right here, the 720p. If you push it beyond 720p, it the footage starts to look artificial, noticeably artificial. There's artifacting, and there are other uh, effects that that kind of tell you that tell you the viewer that something is wrong with the footage it almost looks fake oil painting esque it's weird to explain but maybe i can show you that so i just select the 7 uh 20p the default upscale i leave this alone what's cool about this is you can actually add frames so if you shot on 30 fps and you wanted 60 fps the ai will will interlace those frames between the frames you have and it does it very well, it's it's an amazing tool, not unique to this program by any means, but this is my first encounter with it, and it's just insane. It's insane what it does. So we selected 720p. What I like to do is click the preview button here, and this will also give you an indication on how well your computer is going to be able to do this type of um, work. You know, I have a, a 3080 Ti, which is a relatively new graphics card in my computer. It's a bit expensive, and it, it does the job fairly quickly, especially on lower resolution files, your computer may vary. If you have a older computer, a laptop, these, these processes are going to take a very long time. So that could be a deal breaker for a lot of people. That's why I would recommend you download the trial version before you know making any purchases to see how it runs on your rig um, and, and do a preview like this. And, and that will give you an indication. This should this takes me you know, 17 seconds here for this two second preview. If this is giving you you know 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you you have a good idea. You know, okay, that was two seconds, took me 20 minutes. My file's two minutes long. It can get it can add up really quickly, especially with higher resolution files. So just keep that in mind. But okay, we did a two second preview. I'm just gonna let it play out. Looks good. I like the way it looks. Now just to just to show, I know we've already looked at this, right? But Look at some look at the the work that this upscaler does. And to me, this is just subtle enough where you know it's still analog footage, you know, it's still it's got that analog feel, but it's it's just de-interlaced, it denoises some areas. It's just it's amazing. What well, I'm so excited for this program. It could just be me, but this is absolutely amazing. And it it works on any it doesn't have to be analog. You can put walk snail in here just as I've shown and Take that 1080p file, and you you got something that looks closer to DJI, close closer to 4K on a micro. That's insane. But anyway, let's move on from that. So this preview looks good. We like that. So what we're looking at here. This is just the automatic upscale settings, I guess you could say. And there are different types. There are this inter, interlaced, interlaced, progressive. Some of them do different things. I would say it's best to try them all. If you get a program to see which one you like best. I actually really like the default. It's good enough for me. But you know you can you can fine tune things. You can you know have slightly upscale. You can just remove noise. You can you can do a whole bunch of things. And if you change these to manual you can you can affect every single one of the options of the upscale. So it, it, there's a lot of control there. I'm just going to leave it on auto. I think that looks good. You can introduce grain back into your footage. So if the footage looks you know, too unnatural or removed too much, you can put some grain back in the image and kind of make it look more authentic. Um, I usually leave that off. I, I like the way this um, looks. I really do. Um, and yeah, just a whole bunch of different things that you can mess around with. Stabilization, I haven't really messed with. I use other programs for stabilization. Uh, motion deblur, it seems to do that already in this model. And frame interpolation, we, we went over that. It, it adds frames where there are none, and it does a really good job at that. But 60 FPS is good enough for me. All right, so I did let this render finish. It took 3 minutes and 22 seconds for what was essentially a 30-second render. So not too bad. It depends, you know, how long the files are you're trying to 
to upscale when I do my analog footage. It's usually no more than a, than a couple minutes when I'm trying to post things. You know, longer footage, especially higher quality footage, will take some time. But it's something you can leave on overnight. Just for, set it and forget it. And I think it's worth it. Let's take a quick look at this footage here. I'm probably not going to be able to see much. But, you know, feel free to pause it and take a closer look at any point. YouTube's probably going to do a number to the uh, quality here, but this was the whoop house. I'm uh, trying to keep Callisto in frame here. It was a great time out there. A lot of fun. Arizona was a beautiful state. My first time uh, staying there. Look at, look at my dumb face. All right, let's just pull, pull a random frame here and take a closer look at it here. So this is a, this is a decent frame. Oh, there's some still retains the motion blur, but you can notice that I'm going to zoom in. You can notice that things have been denoised. The edges of the the frame have been pretty thoroughly denoised. We see the edges of, you know, the house in this case are are smoothed out, are deinterlaced. Things are denoised. It just looks sharp. Look look at the reflection of this. Look at this. Look at that. That's so beautiful. And I I, I don't think this is um, obtrusive. I don't think this is something that would stick out as fake or artificial this just looks like the best analog quality you've ever seen and I, i'm just blown away by it i don't know if there's a high there's i don't know if there's a market or a, necessarily an audience for for people who want to upscale their analog footage but man I, i'm i'm hyped about it look at this look at that cute little wooden bear platypus horse thing i mean you, you can it, it just does it so well and it, it, it looks so natural, and it just looks so good. I can't get over this. And this is only analog footage, man. I, I, I can I got to stop. I'm going to stop it there. All right, so just some closing thoughts I wanted to go over with everybody. I think first and foremost is I'm super impressed and happy with this upscaler. I really am. The footage that I put in and the footage that comes out always seems to impress me. Analog footage, I love analog. I think it looks great. It cleans it up appropriately. What's most impressive for me is walk snail. Seeing the 1080p input come to 4K output, it, that's it's not quite DJI L3 levels, but it's pretty close. And it's very impressive when you think that type of footage is coming from a quad like this, you know, a two inch Baby Turtle 2S that's 50 grams, and you're getting close to 4K footage, that's pretty remarkable. One thing you have to keep in mind with all of these upscale programs is it, it's gonna be very GPU intensive. You have to have a really modern computer and that's also kind of expensive. If you have an older laptop, even an older desktop with an older graphics card, your time to render these files, especially higher resolution files, are going to increase exponentially. I'm talking about hours and hours and hours. So that is a huge caveat. Not just anyone can, I mean, anyone can download it, but you have to have a good computer in order to really utilize it how you would want to utilize it. Another big disclaimer is the program is expensive. I think Topaz is about $300 or so, so it is not a, a small purchase. Um, all good upscalers I found cost money. There are free ones online, and you're more than welcome to try it. The results that I receive from those upscalers are not good. They look very artificial. Things look fake. It's easy to tell. It ruins it ruins the video, in my opinion. I would say, you know, definitely do your own research. Again, not affiliated with or sponsored by this uh, Topaz in any way. But you can download a trial version of Topaz. Or you can do a full file. You can use any of their options. It's just, it's the output is just going to be watermarked. So you know, just to test it out to see if you like the results, and also to get a feel for how long these files are going to take you and your rig, I would definitely recommend doing that first. Don't just go and buy this thing. But man, the future of micros is looking good in my opinion. You know, as AI continues to progress at the speed of sound, apparently, you know, things are only going to get better and better. I'm excited for the future of this hobby. I'm excited for the future of AI. And if you get a video of me walking to my mailbox, it's fake. It's not real, okay? I definitely didn't. <laughs> Thanks for watching as always. It's been Mo, and I'll catch you on the next one.